Russia on the edge of the Arctic Ocean, the sun is rising on the little weather station in Kodovarika. Because legends couldn't explain everything, science and with it meteorology were born. To try to understand the phenomenons of the climate, man felt the need to set up in the most remote corners of the planet. The Russian Arctic is one of these strategic areas. One page of the history of the climate is played out in this polar region. Ice and rust, a few shacks that look abandoned. The first village days away by snowmobile. Climate research won't settle for just the shining satellites. Here, Slava Korotk is one of the last people to live like a scientific polar expedition of the ex-Soviet Union. He's a Polonik, a cosmonaut of meteorology, explorer of the cold. At the very north of the world and forgotten, Slava lives at the pace of his weather readings, just where the weather and passing time meet. This tape tells us how many hours of sunshine there has been here. All that is noted, recorded and sent. Every three hours, Slava measures the temperature, atmospheric pressure, rainfall. Once a week, he goes to measure the thickness of the ice field. Under his feet, only a few centimetres of ice separate him from the Arctic Ocean. We do this mainly to study the ice field because the accumulation of the ice depends on the layer of snow, height of the snow and its density as well. Here the thickness of the ice is 70 to 90 centimetres. Monitoring the thickness of the ice field is crucial because its white mantle reflects the sun's rays and protects the Arctic Ocean from warming. This region is a real cold pole and is vital for the climate to function. His readings in hand, Slava goes to send the health report of the ice and the skies. He does this at 8.30 a.m. every day. His only contact with the outside world is through a radio transmitter. Are you receiving? It's for the weather report. The weather, yes, yes. 23103, 23103, 4197, 4197, 110, 46. Third section, 210, 87, 210, 87. Even in the age of satellites, weather stations on the ground remain indispensable. Slava's readings may hang on a thread, but they are reliable. His data will be used by forecasters over the entire world to model the climate and understand the changes year by year. In meteorology, everything is connected. The difference in temperatures and pressure between the poles and the equator create winds and currents. And the currents themselves, both on the surface and in the depths, play an important role regulating the climate.
It's a few days away from spring on the little weather station in Kodovarica. And Slava is taking his third reading of the day. Quantity, six to seven points. Wind direction, south, southwest. Temperature, minus 1.4 degrees. Maximal, minus 1.2 degrees. And after shaking, minus 1.4 degrees. Spring is arriving sooner and autumn later. You know, with global warming, the Netherlands may be flooded. Russia as well, though not entirely. But when that happens, I'll be long retired. I'll grow vegetables by my dacha. And at the end of my garden, I'll have a little boat that I'll take out fishing. Anyway, I'm not afraid of global warming. Look at this landscape. You can't imagine how nice it is to be in the tundra. When you travel 30, 40, 50 kilometers, and there's no sign of any people. Wherever you look is immaculate white. The horizon melts away. And at the end of the sky is an abyss. It's endless. On the other side of the world, spring has arrived early. In a few weeks, the snow will give way to sand. The ice field is about to disappear. The sea will gradually free itself from the ice. And that's where Slava is heading. With a strange fishing rod in his hand, he's about to take the temperature of the Arctic Ocean. So the temperature is minus 1.8 degrees on the top layer of the water. The ice has lumps of 9 to 10 points. And that's it. Job done. Before, there was the ice field. Last year, it had practically disappeared. Whereas three, four, five years ago, it stretched out two to three kilometers. All throughout the Earth's history, there have been similar changes, warmings followed by coolings. The sea? It's my whole life. I can't live without it. Even if I retire, I wouldn't be able to stay for long away from the sea. You need to spend many years here to feel things. It's hard to put into words. And then, without another word, Slava turns and heads back. 